All right, so we're going to talk for a little bit about the prop hub. The prop hub is simple to understand, uh, but complicated to actually assemble. To begin with, we're going to draw an engine, or just a, a square representing an engine. Uh, we'll say that this represents an engine right there, and we'll make it three-dimensional because why not? Okay, so here we have an engine. We'll make a crankshaft and we'll attach it to a propeller. We'll say that the propeller is... Oh, maybe not. We'll draw it in... Uh, yeah, there we go, yellow. So there we have a propeller. The propeller rotates and the propeller uh, obviously rotates in a clockwise direction. Just like that. So you got the engine, we've got the propeller. And we're going to say that the engine uh, produces 100 horsepower. Okay, it's uh, it's always going to produce 100 horsepower, and there's really nothing you can do about that. That's a limiting speed. It's um, or rather that's a limiting e uh, number for the engine. Uh, you'll never get more. You'll never get less than 100 horse. And we'll say that the prop happens to be spinning at uh, 2,000 RPM and you'd like it to be spinning at 2100 rpm so what can you do in order to get the engine sped up to uh, 2100 rpm when it's spinning at 2100 rpm well uh, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to change the resistance that the blades meet as they meet the oncoming air So. Let's draw the blade uh, as it currently exists. Here's the blade as it currently exists. And it's passing through the oncoming airstream. And it's passing through the oncoming airstream at somewhat of a high angle of attack. Uh, as you can see, uh, the airflow is curving uh, around the air, excuse me, around the airfoil. And the airfoil has quite a bit of an angle of attack. The angle of attack to the oncoming wind uh, is something like this right here. That's quite a bit of angle of attack actually. So uh, that high angle of attack is also creating a lot of drag um, all along the, the surface of the wing right in there, much like that. So if you want to reduce uh, the am amount of drag that you have in order to get the propeller to spin faster through the air, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to reduce its angle of attack to the oncoming airflow. And so we'll do that by turning, nope, uh, we'll do that by turning the blades of the prop so that they uh, look more like this. There we go. All right, so now we've got the blades of the prop much more aligned with the oncoming airflow. Uh, the oncoming airflow looks like this. Uh, it still curves around the airfoil of the propeller, uh, but it does it a lot more cleanly. And so we come back to angle of attack again. Here's the angle of attack uh, of the previous blade. Here's the angle of attack of the current blade. Uh, as you can see, the angle of attack is much, much less so the drag is going to be much much less and when the drag becomes less then you're going to have a faster RPM for the same amount of horsepower so um, how does this actually happen how does the blades of the propeller move well in order to talk about that first we'll say that uh, the engine moves oil into the prop hub so the engine pushes oil into the prop hub We'll draw a prop hub up here. So there's a prop hub right there. And uh, there is a spring, and the spring tends to uh, oppose the movement of oil into the prop hub. So oil pressure is always trying to push into the prop hub, and spring pressure is always trying to push oil out of the prop hub. Now what we can say is we can say uh, more oil pressure
More oil pressure means more RPM. And we can say that less oil pressure means less RPM. All right, now, uh, why does this happen? Or internally, how does this happen inside the prop hub? Well, rather than attempt to draw it, what we're going to do is we're going to do go to the FAA's diagram, uh, which is far, far better than anything I could draw myself. Uh, you can find this diagram. Uh, it's part of Advisory Circular uh, 65-12A, and this happens to be page uh, 346. So if you're interested, uh, look up Advisory Circular 65-12A, go to page 346, and you'll see this same diagram and you'll see a lot of uh, much better explanations about it. But um, if we want to cause the uh, prop to rotate faster, then what we're going to do is we're going to uh, pump a bunch of oil into the hub. Uh, the oil is going to flow into the hub. It's going to flow all around inside the hub in uh, ways which are much more complex than uh, we're going to bother explaining here. But what's going to happen is it's going to move these cam rollers, which I will highlight right here. Uh, these cam rollers are going to move. And when they move, they're going to move inside these uh, cutouts, the name of which I don't know. But when they move inside the cutout, uh, they're going to force this rotating cam to move. And when this rotating cam moves right here, it's going to cause the propeller blade itself to move. Kind of like that right there. And that is going to cause the rotation of the propeller blade that you see right there. So, um, refer to AC 6512A, page 346, if you want a detailed description of this. For now, uh, it's worth it just to say that um, if you want the blades of the propeller to speed up, you need to reduce their angle of attack and reduce their drag. If you want the RPM of the propeller to slow down, you need to increase the angle of attack of the blades uh, and therefore increase the drag. And to do that, nope. Uh, and to do that, you need to push more oil pressure into the hub and you'll get more RPM. Or you need to have less oil pressure in the hub and then you'll get less RPM.